so that's that's a great question and i i think i think that i don't think jesus said things just to be popular right i don't think jesus said well what are they going to like the most and spoke it that's not the profile we get in mark at all right but he knew that he was popular he knew that healing people had grown his popularity in in galilee he knew that in in uh in Jerusalem, the people were amazed at his teaching, and so they flocked to him. He knew he had that popularity, so he used it as a buffer. So I want to distinguish between those two, because sophistry is saying anything to get a crowd. Jesus is by no means presented as a sophist. He will, however, capitalize on the goodwill of the people so that he can keep talking to them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, but why did he do that way back in Galilee? Then what's that? Why didn't he become like as popular as he could in Galilee so he could preach? He didn't have to, he didn't have to work on that in Galilee, right? That was one of the themes we looked at in the first couple of weeks. Is when he started healing people, throngs came out. So that in chapter four, when he started to preach the parables out, there were so many people he couldn't do it on the beach. He had to go onto a boat, right? Mm -hmm. And the description was people are coming from Tyre and Sidon and, and outer reaches just to see this guy. So popularity came naturally in, in Galilee, and he used it. The, the, um, the Sabbath day miracle in the synagogue, after which the Pharisees and Herodians wanted to plot against him, never materialized because the people were all on his side. So it naturally came, Kathy. It, I don't think in either place it was an initiating strategy. I think he just used it once it was there. Does that make sense? At least my read of the narrative. Kelly? Okay, so Matt says there was a History Channel special on Holy Week a few years ago that posited that Holy Week might actually have been a period of months. The special suggested that Sakat might plausibly explain Palm Sunday and give Jesus a longer period of time to go from Messiah to condemned. I've always used the criteria of embarrassment as a way of explaining the single week timeline. Do you see any daylight in Mark or other gospels for such a timeline? So one of the, one of the things we found early on about Mark is that this is a compressed gospel. It's why Matthew and Luke are going to be very long, right? Mark is 16 chapters and they're not even as long chapters as Matthew and Luke, which are 24 and, and 28 chapters, right? They're going to add a lot of speeches, a lot of sermons, a lot of other material that Mark very well might have had, but his narrative is very compressed. We never really know what day it is until the last week, right? So uh, the I don't know who, who wrote the question, but, but it's very possible that he compressed and that the use of Sunday is, is sort of, uh, of Palm Sunday is a... Uh, is a symbolic uh, that the week becomes a symbolic thing, right? It's very, it, I, I leave it up to God and Mark, but it's presented to these people in this room, not as a long stretch. It's, pre it's presented to his first audience as a week. And so that's the way we're treating it because we are, we've been reading all along um, through their eyes in a way, what are they hearing in the room? And therefore, what are we in some ways hearing in the room? Scholars of the actual history of Jesus will want to ask this more carefully than, than we are asking it by the nature of this course, which is what does the gospel say happen and, and how would we live in that narrative world? Does that make sense? So the short answer is yes, there's space for this in historical Jesus stuff. There's not much space for it in the market narrative. 